What's up guys, I'm Ethan Carter and I like to make unnecessary things out of leather. So today we're gonna take this boring old Rubik's Cube and turn it into a super classy leather Rubik's Cube. Let's get to it. All right, so my original plan to cut the squares out was to use a square punch that I have, which is actually the perfect size for this Rubik's Cube. The problem is, is that this one's from 2017, and for whatever reason, the new versions are just slightly, slightly smaller. So I'm gonna have to figure out some other solution, I think probably a custom jig, uh, but yeah, let's go see what we can figure out. As I mentioned, if you'd like to do this and have an older Rubik's Cube, I would highly recommend using one of these punches because it'll make it a lot faster and easier. And as you can see, the fit is practically perfect. But let's figure out a way to make it without the punch for the newer cubes. I started by using a utility knife blade to pop one of the colored squares out of the Rubik's Cube. Now you could measure the square, but being off even the slightest amount makes it really hard to achieve a good fit. So I decided to just use the square itself to get relative measurements. I just bumped my ruler up to one edge, made a cut, then turned the piece of leather and did that again, and I had a perfectly sized square. Now I could just repeat that for all the pieces, but as you can imagine, that would take a very long time for how many squares we have to cut out. So I decided to come up with a simple jig to help speed up the process. The jig is going to consist of two strips of leather on each side to guide the strip to be cut, and another small piece sandwiched between them to act as a stop block. For the blade guide, I needed something that would maintain a straight edge and be able to act as a guide as I use my X-Acto. For this, I found a sheet of aluminum left over from another project and cut a small strip off of that. The edges are very sharp, so I recommend rounding over the corners with some sandpaper. As you can see, once attached, this piece will act as a guide for me to cut against. To attach the leather to the wood backing, I simply use some CA glue and accelerator because it doesn't need to be a super strong bond and, well, I'm impatient. I simply spread a line of glue on the leather, sprayed the wood with the accelerator, then used a square as a guide to make sure the strip was attached straight. To attach the second strip, I used two colored squares as spacers to make sure the gap between the two strips was perfectly spaced. Then I simply attached the stop block piece between the two strips at one end. Next, I moved on to attaching the strip of aluminum. It's going to be attached on top of the two side strips, allowing the strip of leather to be cut to slide underneath it. To make sure it wouldn't move at all, I decided to drill a hole at each end and then use some super small tacks to attach it. The tacks I had were longer than the thickness of the leather and the wood, so I simply nipped off the part that came through the bottom and then sanded the remaining amount flush with the wood. Okay, now let's see if this little jig will work. To use it, you simply slide a strip under the aluminum until it bumps up against the stop block. Then, use an X-Acto to cut the square using the piece of aluminum as a guide. The best part about this jig is you can quickly make repeatable cuts by removing the cut square, sliding the strip up, and cutting another perfect square. I continued this process until I had 9 squares of 6 different colored leathers for each side of the Rubik's Cube. I even engraved my logo onto one strip of leather to give the Rubik's Cube a little branding. With all the pieces cut, I moved on to removing the remaining plastic pieces from the Rubik's Cube. It took a few squares to get the hang of the best way to pop them out, but once I did, it went pretty quick. And before I knew it, I had a completely bare Rubik's Cube. Next, I moved on to attaching the leather squares to the now empty cube. To do this, I again just used a little CA glue and went square by square until each side was complete. It's a little hard to see, but every so often, one of the corners of the leathers wanted to stick out but I found that if I carefully used the tip of my X-Acto, I could gently push it down into the cube, and that seemed to fix the issue. I just continued this process square by square, side by side, and before I knew it, I was attaching the very last square. And after a quick inspection, the leather Rubik's Cube was done. If you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting that subscribe and bell button. I also post a lot of behind the scenes and smaller scale projects as Ethan Carter Designs on Instagram, and I would love to have you follow me there as well. And if you're interested in supporting my content even more and getting some great rewards at the same time, please consider joining my Unnecessary Leather League of Supporters over on Patreon or Buy Me a Coffee. I've left links to both of those in the description if you're interested and able to support my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.